What is up guys, NYKF31 here, bringing you a Madden uh, 16 video, 4th and 1 online CFM, this is season 5 that we're in, season 4 ended with me going 11 and 5, and I lost in the wild card round in the playoff, I'm having a brutal playoff Madden cycle, I've lost two Super Bowls, and... I've been the Peyton Manning of the first round going one and done a lot. Not good. So looking at the uh, old calendar, we're probably in the last seasons or close to it of online CFM for the year. So let's go. Let's... YouTube needs NYK to win a Super Bowl. It's the only thing I haven't done. I've been to like six or not six. I've been to like five and I've taken the L in all of them. <laughs> you guys need me to win a Super Bowl. I know you do. But anyhow, had a little bit of fun in the draft. I didn't really have much in the way of immediate needs in the draft, so I said, you know what, I've kind of tapped Bryce Petty out. I've developed him as good as, as he's going to get. You're going to see that his throwing ratings now are very expensive to upgrade and get to the 90s when you factor in confidence. So, you know, he is what he is. He's not going to get any better. I've kind of maxed him out. So I figured, why not have a little bit of fun and pick a um, quarterback in the top of the first, not in the top of the first round, I got this guy in the mid to late first round, Matt Ash, um, out of Nebraska, and, um, you know, his short and medium accuracies are ready as a rookie after, you know, training camp and whatnot is... Right up there, pretty close to Bryce. I gotta work on his deep accuracy. I can get that up to 70 in no time. He's superstar development. You see how, you know, cheap his throwing accuracy ratings are to, you know, upgrade right now. He's got that 93 throw power, 89 throw on the run. Gotta get that play action up. And he's got some mobility. If I need to buy some time or if I need to gain some yards on the hoof, not a burner, but, you know, 72 is more than enough. And I decided to have a little bit of fun and outfit him. Oops, what am I doing? Where are you? So I had to have a little bit of fun and outfit him in the fashion of run-and-shoot quarterbacks of old. I gave him Warren Moon's number, number one, and I gave him Jeff George's face mask when he was at the Falcons, 90s Falcons, Jeff George. Jeff George had two phenomenal seasons in the run-and-shoot under June Jones. I also gave him his eye black and his white sleeves. And Jeff George, oddly enough, also wore number one when he was with the Falcons. But number one's for Warren Moon, not Jeff George. And I was kind of surprised by how many releases I could give him. I gave him Philip Rivers because it was the closest to Colt Brennan's. Quick release, not quite sidearm, not quite over the um, shoulder. But... It's really whip-like fast, kind of like how Colt Brennan's was when he was with Hawaii. Colt Brennan had that, you know, slingshot motion. And I thought that'd be neat to do, kind of like make him a tribute to um, the great run-and-shoot quarterbacks of yesteryear. I didn't give him Colt's visor. I don't think a visor would look good with this kind of helmet. It kind of looked like um, Jim McMahon. So... I don't think I'm going to give him a visor. I'm going to have him have the, um, just the, um, face paint there. So, Philip Rivers was the closest one I could find to Colt. But there's a lot here. You got Aaron, I, I, I was thinking of Aaron Rodgers a little bit, but not quite. A little bit elongated there. Tony Romo, he's, his is kind of quick. But not as quick as Rivers. Rivers is, is look how, look how he whips it. Like a whip. You got Big Ben, Matt Ryan, Matty Ice. You 
Not gonna give him Sanchez. I mean, to hell with that. Not gonna give him Alex Smith. Matthew Stafford had a chance in hell. Real elongated release there. Not gonna, not gonna give him Tim Tebow's release, certainly. But look at all these releases they have. You know, you have these uh, generic throwing styles, high release. Slinger 2, I was kind of thinking about this. But not, not quite quick enough for my likings. No, generic, no, three quarters. I was considering this one as well. That didn't quite fit. You did this. You have classic two. No. Classic three. I'm just kind of cycling through all these just to let you guys see them all. Sam Bradford. No, we don't want to see Sam Bradford. Tom Brady's cadence and his release. Over the top there. Drew has a quick one, too. I kind of considered him over the top, but I'm um, quick. Not, we're not going to waste time with Jason Camels and Matt Castle or Jimmy Clausen's. As much as I love you, Jimmy Clausen, no thank you. So we're back to Slinger, high release. John Elway. If they had Marino, I'd be all over it. Or even maybe Kurt Warners. But they don't, I just, John Elway was the only um, legend quarterback that I saw. Flacco's got a real elongated one, too. That's, a, that's pretty elongated. We don't want to see Josh Freeman's. But you get the idea. Eli. Peyton. Peyton does his little happy feet stutter. You see that there? So yeah, I settled on Philip Rivers. Nice quick release there. It's a little low and he's short, six ones. That might be a problem, but you know, whatever. I like it. Let's look at the rest of the roster. Rest of the roster, I've been vacillating, going back and forth between Patriots playbook and. The uh, run and shoot. I'm already I'm already running run and shoot with the Jags. I'm right now leaning towards the Pats because my roster set up pretty nicely to run that style of offense. The Pats offense is basically a pro style run and shoot. You have the run and shoot. You have a lot of run and shoot pass concepts in that playbook, um, both in real life and you know the game has a fair share of them too. You have a lot of levels and switches, and you have your shallow crosses, and you're and you have a bevy of wide receiver screens. More wide receiver screens in this playbook than in the run and shoot playbook, believe it or not. So, um, you know, here's the quarterback, as, you are, as you've already seen. Um, Chris Ivey retired on me. So that leaves me with this guy who I drafted um, the previous season, who was a backup. That's some good suits, some good acceleration. Elusive as hell, 92 elusiveness. High affairs a little bit more physical. Going to use him as a touchdown vulture in the goal line. Got a pretty good fullback. I drafted him a couple of drafts ago. He's pretty good, you know, pass catching fullback. He'll be quite useful on those wheel routes out of the backfield and in those um, Texas concepts and a decent blocker to, to, to boot in the run game. My wide receiver unit, Golden Tate. I got him in a trade last season, and I franchised him this season. His speed has held up. You know, we're in season five now, so these older receivers, the speed regression starts to hit. I 
And we got Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson doesn't quite have the giddy-up he used to have, but he still has good acceleration, so I can live with that. And he can make catches downfield. This guy I drafted last season as my first round pitch, LeJohn Charles, 6'4", man beast. I basically redshirted him last season. I just basically uh, spent development points on him to get him to where he's at right here. And Devin Smith is holding down a slot as well. And this is a guy who I drafted a couple seasons ago. He's strictly a return specialist. He's got decent route running but and release, but his catching traffic is low. And, you know, I'm not going to play him in the slots when I have... You know, guys who can run better, just as good routes, and get off the line better, and catch in traffic and spec catch better. So he's basically a returner. He's got 95 jump and 95 speed. I might throw him into a formation here and there for some screens, but other than that, he's just going to be a specialist gadget type of play, you know, guy. Occasionally pop him on, a, on some um, shallow crosses out of empty formation, sub him in those sets, and just let him run, ha run wild in space. I got two good receiving tight ends. Jason Morrow's a freaking beast. He's an absolute animal. And, you know, Nick O'Leary can get it done as well. Not as good a route runner, but he can catch and catch in traffic some as a second tight end. Second year uh, left tackle who I drafted. Solid blocking ratings and with still a lot of room to grow. I start Jarvis Harrison. I got this guy in the draft, too. I had a really good draft last season, but I'm starting Jarvis Harrison still until I grow him to, you know, something better as far as his blocking ratings goes. Impact rocking and his strength is better and his acceleration is better, um, but I have better awareness for Jarvis Harrison, and he has good, you know, penalty traits. Nick Mangold retired, so I went out and signed Brian De La Puente. You know, not a bad fill-in for... Old Man Mangold. Will Beatty. I signed him and moved him to tack to um, guard. And I still have the Brickishaw holding it down at another tackle spot. I have him playing right tackle as opposed to left as he's um, a better run blocker to the strong side. I could actually have him. He's not strong enough really to play guard. So I'm still having him out there at um, right tackle. Muhammad Wilkerson, he plays three technique defensive tackle for me. These are backup, you know, role players. 99 block shed, 99 power move, 96 tackling. Good athlete for a defensive tackle in a 4-3 or a 3-4 defensive end. 94 strength, 80 acceleration, 71 speed. I did not re-sign Leonard Williams. I'll show you why in just a second. I have Sheldon Richardson playing this quote-unquote strong side end. 83 acceleration, good athlete for a guy that size, 70 speed, I can live with that. 88 strength, 97 pursuit, 91 block shed, 99 power move. And I signed Connor Barwin to plug in at the other defensive end spot. 94 power move, 86 block shed. And Ray McDonald, he plays my 4-3 nose tackle spot with 90 block shedding and 90 tackling. And he's 81 strength's a little bit low, but I can live with it. I always want my best pass rushing defensive uh, tackle to be the three technique, and he has 90 power moves. He can get some gravy sacks now and then. Lewis Nix the third for depth. This guy, I drafted him in season one. I have him playing the right outside backer spot. 91 tackling, 80 hit power, 84 speed, 87 block shed, 86 pursuit, 84 play rec, 74 man coverage for what it's worth on the linebacker, 82 zone coverage. That's the biggie with how I play with my Tampa 2 in this and whatnot. Demario Davis, I use her him most of the time. Got him up to 80 zone coverage. She's got 92 pursuit. He's nice and fast. 85 block shed, so I can get off block with him pretty nicely. Now, 90 acceleration. He's got good speed, 87 speed. Manti Teo, I have him actually playing the other outside backer spot, the um, field, the boundary side, or the quote-unquote strong side backer, 90 block shed. It's a little bit slower. Good acceleration, though. Good pursuit, good play rec. And 82 zone coverage. These are back. Brooks Reed is for depth. That's his Kyle Van Noy. Let's 
Ultron Werner. And Chris Culliver on my outside corners. Ultron Werner slowing down a little bit. He can still hold it there. 78 catching. I like that for a corner. Good tackler. Press is kind of meh, but 90 man coverage and 96 zone. Chris Culliver, 91 man coverage, 90 zone. For CFM, this is more than acceptable. This is not mutt, so you're going to. I'm going to do well on one on one jump balls with these two outside. So I can play um, quarters and single high cover three and, you know, cover four verts down to see myself. I have this guy who I drafted a season ago, two seasons ago now. Um, Kenyatta's Riley, 86 man coverage, 90 zone. He can press a little bit better. He's fast as well, 93 speed. Could I play him outside and maybe move Werner to or Culver inside? I could if I wanted to as much, with as much zone as I like to play. But, eh, no. I'm not going to do that. I might do that if there's a tight end on the field in the slots. I might play strong, um, which I'm going to call it, slots, and move him outside then. And I also have Patrick Robinson, who I signed. You know, solid dime corner. And these are drafted players who I drafted late in drafts for, you know, depth. Darrell Reeves is still kicking. 99 man coverage. He can still man up with tight ends and 97 zone and 98 play rec. He's just slow now. Really, the only guy he can follow across the field are tight ends. 79 speed, 87 acceleration. This is my strong safety. He's got 84 hit power for that. What's that worth? Hit power has been kind of toned down for AI players this year. 93 player where I can 92 zone coverage. So I'm going to have Revis playing single high, him around the box. And also in quarters coverage, these two should be, you know, pretty stout. And also Corey Graham as depth. Rookie. No depth here. And Kyle Brinza is doing the kicking. So. There are your Season 5 J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. So be on the lookout for them. Leaning heavily towards the Patriots playbook. I ran out of the Saints with them because I could really, you know, combine power running with Ivory out of those, you know, I single back pistol and shotgun sets. Um, but now with Ivory gone and I have finesse backs and backs who can really catch the football and, you know, good tight end. Um, a solid second tight end and receivers that can get it done one-on-one -on -one down the field. Um, either the patch playbook or the run and shoot made sense. I don't like duplicating playbooks along, you know, the three CFMs that I'm in. So I'll probably roll with the Patriots and in pro style shoot it. <laughs> That's what I'm leaning towards. And continue to run and shoot with the Jags. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll talk to you all later. Peace.